Senator Dio Wong. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. In its outlook for the GST distribution, Budget Review 2015-16, the parliamentary web website states, making estimates or projections of the anticipated GST relativity of each state or territory appears to be a fraught task. Also, small variations will inevitably have a sig significant impact upon the portion that each state or territory will receive of the GST revenue pool. The technical projection indicates that WA's GST relatively would fall to 0.18064 in 2017-18 before recovering a little in 2018-19. Embedded within these technical projections, however, is an assumption of an iron ore price above $100 per tonne. So, in the 2015-16 budget year, Western Australia's share of GST revenue decreases from 4.2% to 3.4%, with $1.92 billion set to benefit Western Australia, less than any other state. As something of a sop to assuage the WA state government and public, the federal government is hyper-touting $5.48 billion in additional payments for state projects. Through, though this is down from $5.8 billion in 2014-15. In the same vein, WA is, uh, is to be one of the main beneficiaries of the $5 billion Northern Australia Infrastructure Facility investment. Based on Treasury forecasts, 2018-19, the GST amount to be received by WA is $4.1 billion, placing the state in the fourth lowest income position immediately below South Australia at 6.6, .6, Queensland at 16.8, Victoria at 14.3, and New South Wales, top of the list, 19.3 billion. Project top-ups top are no substitute for a fair distribution of GST. Look at the population growth projections. Perth is the fastest growing capital city in Australia, the fourth to hit 2 million people. Perth's population grew, grew by 2.5% in the 12 months to June 2014, an extra 48,400 people. Many moved to the state from other parts of Australia and from overseas, bringing their skills, creative talents and their future hopes. The resources boom was not squandered. Contrary to popular rhetoric, we brought together and enhanced the capabilities of our resident families, businesses and workers, established, established and new. We created and continue to explore new ways of doing things. We set the pattern for growth in both numbers and pro productivity. Above all, now is the time for innovative measures to ensure that Australia as a whole will make economic gains from the powerhouse that WA has become. It is a state that more than justifies bold investment. Sadly, in this place, not so long ago, when I attempted, through a Senate motion, to encourage new ways of thinking, notably introducing the novel approach of a not-for-profit education provider, and, and the suggestion that we should closely examine the options put forward. This was rejected by some senators who evidently had not read the motion or, and I pose this as a question rather than a statement, was it a case of blind political dogma blocking innovative thinking? Daily, the visitors to my office are confirming my, my worst suspicion. We appear to be losing Australia's long-time honoured can-do mindset. We are undermining our own intellectual capabilities, sticking to systems that have outlived their true value and falling short on promising opportunities to do things differently. The GST distri distribution process and the overdue education revolution are just two of the several examples where innovation is missing in action.